G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome to today's video. And you can probably tell by the title, we are back at Bathurst, so let's see if we can have a better uh, go around here this time. So my previous round around Bathurst was quite a while ago in Group 3, where I honestly just couldn't get a hold of, I couldn't get a grip. Uh, I was driving like a complete idiot. Um, but you can see here, this is my qualifying lap, so you can have a look at that. But you can see I've put in about 10 laps. Uh, well, this is my 10th lap, obviously, of um, qualifying, so I had a bit of practice at this, but the main disparity this time, uh, it's in Group 4, not Group 3. So it's a slower category of cars, and uh, they're a lot easier to control. So um, let's see if that means that I can keep a hold of myself, get a grip, and just sort of uh, forget about the past and look forward onto the future. Of course, I'm always providing the most inspirational of quotes. So, um, instead of looking on Instagram for those every morning, just watch a smokescreen video. I'm sure I'll inspire you in some way or another. But here we go, coming towards the downhill section. So we've chosen the Lamborghini Huracan, just because it's a nice, sort of, easy car to drive. Uh, so we get a little bit out of shape through there, but not too badly. Yeah, but it's quite easy to drive, four-wheel drive, good top end, uh, seven gears, all right handling. Goes around here okay. Uh, I seem to drive it well, or compared to my other average driving, I drive it well. But we're just starting down Codrum straight, so we're three or nearly four tenths up on a 214.6. So that puts us on track for a 214.2. So let's see if we can convert what is a pretty decent lap, decent enough lap, into um, a win here. So, or into a good lap, I suppose. That would be a win, a good lap. It would be a win for me. It's the small ones that count. But we're, of course, at Mount Panorama Circuit, the 23-turn Australian, sole Australian track in Gran Turismo at the moment. Hopefully we see a few more in the future, but uh, we cannot cross our fingers. Everyone knows what polyphony digital is like. But we crossed the line there with the 214.0, so I made, made up quite a bit of time through the cutting. Uh, the chase, sorry, not the cutting, that's a different corner. Through the chase, the uh, turns 20 to 22 chicane sort of thing there. But you can see that puts us second on the grid. So we're BB rated at the moment, which is still not that great. I'm still aiming to get that rating up a bit. But uh, second, nevertheless, is a good result. So we're going to start off the race now, just warming up the car and preparing for its launch. We just skip ahead to the start. So we got a Peugeot up ahead that's not really the best car. It's got a good top end, I think, but it's a front wheel drive car, which means it doesn't handle too well. You can see how much ground I gain going through that corner there. I was about four tenths behind and I'm ne nearly uh, two tenths, or caught up two tenths. But look at that. The gap up above my flag on the left hand side of the screen, you can see it's actually increasing despite me being in his slipstream. So that really tells me that that Peugeot is absolute rocket in a straight line, so uh, I don't want to be out of slipstream range going down Codrod. But here we go, this is the cutting now, this corner coming up, this, yeah, right here, this left-hander. But we go through there nicely, you've got to keep it narrow to ride the camber, that really helps you uh, get around that corner there. But now we're going to head up the mountain there, so this sort of section here, it's sort of pretty much flat but uh, you do have to lift to sort of rotate the car a bit so the only or this one is this corner isn't flat you gotta lift going over the crest otherwise you end up being shepherded wide into McPhillamy Park but we're gonna head down the S's now let's see uh, if we can get them okay keep it tight through there get a good line through here because this leads to an acceleration point down towards Forest Elbow uh, but I just get a bit out of shape, a little bit of oversteer, and bin it into the wall, and you know what that means? I'm out of slipstream range for Conrod Straight, which isn't good. I get a better run through um, turn 18 there before Forest Elbow than the Peugeot up ahead, but because of just his top end heading downhill, it's just no use at all, so uh, he manages to pull out 9 tenths, which really doesn't lend itself to slipstream. Let's head down through the chase now and see if we can manage to actually catch up some position or a position or this position uh, because, you know, I actually 
got through there okay. Or I was keeping up with him all right. So it was an, it was an all right lap until that little bit of a mistake heading through there. But we're gonna start on to lap two. So this lap is really uh, just trying to get a clean lap in, a uh, fast clean lap in this car here and trying to catch up, going to that Peugeot and hopefully putting a move on him in, uh, in lap three. So this is uh, the first straight mountain straight, so it's sort of an uphill straight, so you've got to get a good run off Hell's Corner, turn one, to uh, get all the momentum you can going up here. But you can see I've posted a purple sector there, it doesn't mean too much being on lap two, but I think it... I think it does take into account the sector the guy in first just posted in front of me. Uh, I think that's how it works. But you can see through the course of the sort of few opening corners there as we head through turn three now um, that we caught up quite a, uh, we lost a bit of ground to the Persia, but it goes a bit deep into turn four and we catch up quite a bit of ground on there. So uh, you can see I'm now six tenths behind as opposed to 1.4. So that means. If I keep this gap, that's a good slipstream range. Of course, he'll still pull ahead, but being in slipstream means I don't lose quite as much time as he would, as I would if I was out of the slipstream uh, due to his top speed. But going through here, I just get a little bit ambitious and don't quite lift enough. You can see what happens. I end up sliding through McPhillamy Park. That, uh, that of course, is the uh, gravel there. But I go a bit wide coming through turn 13. Th through turn 14, there were two wheels on the right side of the line, but it just means um, just means I get a penalty. So while the car was technically the sort of outermost wheels were on the correct side of the line, uh, it still registered a penalty, which of course uh, at turn 14 is early enough to serve on the straight of the same lap. So I'm again wait, makes his way past, and that's really the last we're going to see of them. So by this point, about halfway, or about a third through turn three, I just catch the grass and spin it around, bend it into the wall, and honestly, I just get so many flashbacks of uh, what happened in the previous video there. Uh, black and white, you know, Vietnam, sort of <laughs> gunfire overhead, sort of flashbacks, but uh, that meant we lost the position to the guy currently in third, and that means, of course, we finish in fourth place. So, a bit of a bin, to be honest, and that was, I think I did two races around here, the first race was nothing exciting, uh, and then this race was about the most exciting uh, one I had. Uh, both races, of course, led to uh, pretty severe bins, so um, I, that's where I left that race, there in fourth place, so having the uh, front wheel drive cars one and two is a bit of a surprise considering the type of circuit it is. But we move on, we move on. So this is a different week. So I didn't do too many races around Bathurst, so it was not enough to have its own video. The first race was really uninteresting around there, so that is why I left that out. But uh, that means there's not enough in that second race for an entire video, so I've gone with this. Uh, I think it was the following week's race C. It was Alsace Village 2, so Alsace Village track in reverse. That's what the two means. Uh, in group two. So this is actually a very interesting little thing here. So uh, just have a look at my qualifying lap there. Bear in mind it was fairly close to the top ten so no matter how it looks it was pretty good and I was very happy with the lap. But uh, it's this is interesting. So it is group two. Something I've really never driven before ever really on this game uh, at all and it has an interesting past and interesting introduction into the world of Gran Turismo Sport. So upon release, the game had groups 1, 3, 4, group B, uh, and group N, or the N-class cars. So group 2 was absent, but then in update 1.15, they added three cars from Honda, Lexus, and Nissan, uh, three Super GT cars. So uh, Super GT is a Japanese racing series, these are tw 2016 cars. So like from the year 2016, so, uh, three cars, like I said, from Honda, the Ray Brick Ray Brig NSX Concept GT, the Motul Ortec GTR from Nissan, and from Lexus the AU Toms RCF uh, in update 1.15. Then in update 1.29 they added three more Group 2 cars, the older 2008 spec GT500 cars once again, one from each of the manufacturers. Uh, it was an Epson NSX from Honda, 
a Zenavi Mismo GTR from Nissan and the Patronus Toms SC430. So you can just see my qualifying time, the 143.8, and you can see that we are starting the final race now. But that is where Group 2 is at today. Uh, six cars. Everyone really only uses the 2016 cars because the 2008 cars are a good couple of seconds off the pace. So they cost 800,000 credits each. So that's quite a hefty sum, especially considering that it's very difficult to earn credits in this game. So um, <laughs> I saved up and bought one car, the Nissan uh, Motul Ortec 2016 GTR. So it's the best race pace car. It's the uh, 2016 Honda is better over one lap. So if you can tame it, it can uh, lead to quicker lap times. Uh, but uh, I don't have the patience or, you know, the money to pay for a Honda and it's not as good in the race where uh, tie wear and fuel use are present. So all in all, Nissan GTR from 2016 is the best Group 2 car and that's the one you're going to see as I drive around Alsace Village 2. So the track now, so we'll talk about the track in a second, we'll just commentate the first lap here. I got a little bit deep into turn 7 here, oh, and I get a little bump from the guy in 3rd. So you can see that qualifying time put me 2nd in a B, what was it, a B, B lobby? So uh, that's, I guess that's alright, uh, B, B isn't that, that great, but you can see the leader took, takes a really weird line through the massive long turn 10 here at Alsace, and you can see it actually gets him a bit of a gap at the moment. So we're still in second, about 1.4 seconds off the leader. I just touched the grass and it just inhibits my, my getting on the power there, and I lose quite a bit of time there to the lead, so I'm nearly two seconds behind now, but we're going to go through turn 13 now. I get really use the camber that turn, and I actually get a worse exit than him, and it just dips, dips, just goes over two seconds. So the first lap, is really everyone trying to settle into their own rhythm as we go around turn 15 with a really weird apex there and you can get on the power actually quite early using the camber of that corner to get out but I get a little bit of oversteer there and you can see Golden Bullet has shot away like a bullet uh, to about two and a half seconds ahead of me so uh, that is the opening lap you can see we're quite firmly in uh, second place there at present moment and we just look behind to see that we are 9 tenths, or pretty much a second ahead of third place. So we find ourselves in a little pocket of air here at Alsace, and we'll talk about the track right now. So Alsace Village, it's an original Gran Turismo circuit, and it was developed especially for this game. It's based in France. Uh, there's an actual village called Alsace Village in France, it's sort of based on the scenery and uh, flavour of that area, but it, of course it is not a real racetrack. But it's a very nice track, I really actually quite enjoy this track, it works good in Group 2 and Group 4 actually. Haven't driven it in Group 3, but I, I guess it would be good also there. Uh, it has 17 corners and it can run in reverse, and this is the reverse direction, so the actual the default direction is the opposite, to what, opposite way to what I'm driving at the moment. Uh, it has a longer straight of only 450 metres, so that... I guess that could be the straight before the final corner. Oh, uh, that would be it, yeah. I would say that's it there. And overall it's a length of 5.4 kilometers, an elevation change of 59 meters, so there's a little bit of variation. You can sort of see some of the hills there, or through the lap, probably not quite here. As I just touched the grass on the inside there, but we managed to get through there. Okay, uh, what else? Available upon release, uh, that's about it and it can run in the opposite direction as we are right now. So over the course of that lap you can see Golden Bullet has actually gone out to nearly 4 seconds so he's really running away with this so he's quite a quick driver, or she I guess, are quite quick drivers uh, and I hope he's not actually born in 2003 because that would be quite embarrassing if I got beaten by someone that young. But we continue on anyway so we skip ahead to lap 6, there was nothing that lap two, just play that four more times and that gets us to lap six, which is the in-lap, of course, race C, fuel use and tyre wear. You can see the fuel use there is marginal. You don't need to refuel, but you don't want to really, really rev out the car constantly because you will run out before the end of the race. 
So we got four new racing hard tyres and come out in fourth position. So not everyone went into the pits there, but we're going to see the outlap here at the moment. So we've come out behind Kana Toraman 23 in the, uh, that is a Lexus, the 2016 Lexus there. So that is really where the pit stop leaves us. But now it's just a sprint to the end, really, trying to get as many positions as possible, ideally trying to jump people in the pit stops. We'll see that next time we come around the circuit. But um, that is for about a minute's time when, when we'll see that. So the strategy, of course, it's an 11 lap race. So uh, obviously you can't pit exactly halfway, as uh, you would need to be pitting right about this portion of the track, and there's no pit lane there in case you need me to really explain the obvious. So you've either got to go in at the end of lap 6 to get an undercut, oh hang on, end of lap 5 to get an undercut or end of lap 6 to get an overcut. So really pitting lap 7 is a bit too late because you're spending too much time on two warm tyres that is like T00 warm tyres, not TWO. Okay, so you also need me to explain that uh, obvious quirk there, obvious notion. But you can see through the course of this lap, I think uh, Kanatoraman didn't pit. So he's on very warm tyres. You can just see, I'll just drop a gear as he uh, gets a load of overseer and shoot right past as we go out that corner there. So Golden Bullet is in with 54% of fuel, but we just skip ahead as we gain a position coming at the start of lap 8. You see this guy's all over the place, and then Kanatoraman just spins me around through turn 3, and that is well. <laughs> Uh, well, you can see what's happening at the moment as I'm really struggling to get the uh, Nissan going back up the hill. So that's kind of ruined my race there because I was back behind Golden Bullet. But as we come through turn six now, someone's off Kanatoraman, so that is uh, Karma uh, doing justice there, doing God's work. So we're in fourth place now. Uh, coming through turn 14 now, got another yellow flag, let's see what chaos reveals itself through the final corner, someone slow there is a penalty around this corner, it is the guy in second place, so he's had an absolute shocker of a uh, sort of lap here at the moment, so he was going to actually, you know, finish second, which is really good in these, uh, well obviously it's really good in these races, but he will move on, but yeah, so he's got a penalty, so that's quite disastrous for him, he's in the, uh, 2016 Honda, so second to fourth uh, is the full 2016 Super GT trifecta uh, as we go past a back market in a Honda there, not quite understanding the way the circuit works there. But we fast forward through this lap and we pass another back marker as we go through turn 13 into turn 14 and 15 and as we come out of turn 15 through turn 16 now you can see the guy in second is going to serve his penalties at the penalty gates so the, ideally we're going to make up a position yes we are we're going to make up his position as he had a massive penalty he didn't quite catch how big it was but it was obviously big enough for him to lose a load of positions but we come through the final corner and it's going to be a third place. Uh, of course, we beat Kanatoraman, thank goodness, after he spins us around uh, in turn three. But we manage to make up, I guess, an okay recovery into third place. Uh, we were only, in the end, really a second off the guy in second. So that's not too bad considering the uh, event of me being spun around cost me about 15 seconds. But there we go, that is a third place, and that's where I'm going to leave the video today. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching, and if you do enjoy my content, I urge you to hit subscribe so you see these amazing videos in your feed every week. Uh, do like this video if you liked it. Well, I guess you can dislike it if you if you really disliked, uh, but the idea is that you like it. But that is the end of the video today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.